Afternoon, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we are we are now in Appleby, and uh, we're just about to go on the tour um, of Appleby Castle. Um, so we're just at the entrance now, just waiting for the uh, guide to start the tour. So that's the castle you can see in the background. Obviously, the England St George's flag, um, three lions, I should say, flying. Um, that's just the grounds. Oh, yeah. So, um, oh, yeah. So Andy's having a good chat with the guy, too. That's the main gates. So, uh, come with us, guys. Historic building. So we'll be heading around the eastern perimeter of the walls, seeing how the place has developed over the centuries. Then we'll head inside the second hall, where I'll talk a bit about the history of the place and the people who lived here. And then we'll finally finish uh, downstairs, where I've got my own collection of replica helmets for you to have a look at. <laughs> so, to start things off, the town of Appleby, or the Bonsgate part of Appleby, was built around 920 AD by the Danes or as popular culture likes to call them, Vikings! <laughs> but things really get going in 1092, yeah, when the Normans annexed this county from the Scots, and the first Thank Norman Lord much. of Westmoreland, Ivo yep, yep. de Talbois, right. built the original wooden Mott and Bailey here, yeah, although he would die in 1094 before the place was completed. Don't feel too sorry for him though. Like I said, this is a Norman from William the Conqueror's army I'm talking about. And as an individual, Ivo was a thoroughly nasty piece of work, to put it mildly. So he was replaced around 1100 AD by Ranel Flemeschine, who not only finished the castle, but also planned out all of Burrogate, including building the original St. Lawrence's Church, which was burnt down in 1388 during a Scottish raid, and was later rebuilt by Lady Anne Clifford in the 17th century, more on her later. The White Pillar was built in 1660 to commemorate the restoration of Charles II, and the gates were built in the late 19th century by a Glaswegian company, the Saracen Foundry, for the Tuftons, who'd been renamed the Hothfields in 1882. So, hence the H. Keep an eye out for that H, because the Hothfields couldn't resist showing off their brand new title all over the place. Any questions? All right, let's start heading up that were dug out to defend the castle against any possible incursions um, and just above it is the uh, stable block built in 1652 to 53 by Lady Anne Clifford one of the most celebrated and famous owners um, uh, right, um, oh, sorry. called the bee house although nothing to do with bees uh, that's where Lady Anne would go to relax whenever she came out into the gardens to read poetry, books, meditate, whatever she felt like doing. Um, and its, found, its foundations date back to the 13th century. So before she built on top of it, we think that might have been the site of a watchtower, considering its position overlooking the valley. And then just over, just over the hill where the tennis court lies, uh, well, well, we can't see it from this angle, but it's over there. It marks out where Lady Anne kept her herb garden, where she grew all sorts of plants for both medicinal and culinary purposes. Being lived in, the other oh. being Skipton in Yorkshire, the Clifford mm. capital. As for the rest, there's Brough, where I live, that's about eight miles down the road. That's a ruin. Uh, the castle, not the town. <laughs> Broome near Penrith, where Anne died, where her mother died, and where her father was born, all in the exact same room, I might add. Ruin. Pendragon near Kirby Stephen and Malastang, which honestly couldn't be more of a ruin if it tried. <laughs> yeah, you're right there. Yeah. And Clifford's Tower in York, which was originally King's Tower before it was granted to the Cliffords as a gift from the Crown. So as Monty Python would say, but the six ones stayed up. <laughs> Man-made ditches in the north of England, some 30 feet deep in places. Wow. And they used to be completely dry. 
but in the 1970s they were filled up by the Vernon family. <laughs> This is um, the parish church of St Lawrence, Appleby. So a church, I don't know what century it is. Looks very quaint. So I'll uh, have a little walk inside. church there. It's quite big inside. Yeah. And, um, reminds me uh, of a chapel <coughs> with the two aisles, three aisles. It's the altar. The lighting of candles, but unfortunately, we don't have anything to light. There's a font there for christenings. That's the church. It's quite quiet. Wow, stone, stone there, uh, tiles. 
Votatores amigos, Eclesiastes.